In addition to those automatic tools that are pretty easy to use, there are some very complex and advanced color correction tools built into Final Cut Pro. And we're going to do an overview of those tools in this lesson. So I'm going to select a clip here. And in the inspector, we've been looking at the video inspector. We looked at audio and the information about a clip. But there's also this little one that's a triangle here. This is the color inspector. And this is where you can go to get the advanced tools that are built in uh, to Final Cut Pro. And there's a number of tools here. The first one here is the color board. And the way the color board works is there's three rooms, color, saturation, and exposure. And below each of these, we have these little dials that we can use to adjust the color. Before I adjust the color, I'm going to show you another tool that's built in, which are the scopes. You might have heard this term thrown around. If you click on the view menu, there's an option here to see the video scopes. And you can use the shortcut command 7 to turn the scopes on. Now, as we start to do this, we're taking up a lot of screen real estate. So I'm going to get rid of the browser here on the left side. Just hitting this button to make the scopes much bigger, because this can be very helpful here. And the way the scopes work, at the top right, we have a view and an another button below it. The view allows us to see multiple scopes at one time. For the purposes of this course, we're just going to show one scope at a time. And then below it, you can select which scope you want to see. So we have a histogram. We have a vector scope, and we have a waveform here. So three different options. And if you get really deep into color correction, you can change the channels and the units as well. But again, that's beyond the scope of this course. But we're going to start out using the waveform here. And specifically, I'm using the Luma channel, which Luma uh, is for, think of it like lightness. It's your light and dark uh, areas. And that's what this graph is showing me. From left to right, is the shot here from left to right. So if I see back here, kind of on the left side, behind Simon's uh, shoulder and back here, there's this really bright spot of the shot. And if I look over on the scope here, you'll notice these little lines going way up towards the top here on the left side of this graph because that's representing those light portions of the clip. In a similar way, over on the right side, a lot darker over on the right side, so we don't see any uh, lines way up here. All the stuff is down at the bottom, representing all those dark colors. So even without looking at the shot, just looking here at the scope, we could tell that this is a much darker shot because almost all of the, the lines that are drawn here on this graph are below 25. Zero is black, 100 is pure white. So most of these are down here near, near the darker end of this scope. So why did we bring up the scope? Well, if we go back over to our color board here, we're going to start in the exposure room. And we have three primary buttons here that we're going to use. You could use this one on the left. This does a global change, making everything brighter, which if you look at the scope, everything moves up. Or I make everything darker, which everything moves down. So that's a global change if you wanted to do that. They call it the master down here at the bottom. But really, we're, I like to mess with each of these uh, first because that lets you do more fine adjustment. You can adjust the shadows or the darker areas of your shot. The white circle here on the right is the lighter areas. And then the mid-tones in the middle, this is kind of all the shades that are in between. Not the darkest, they're lightish, but kind of everything in between. So let's first start by making the brighter areas brighter. And in general, you can use the scope here to adjust this. And I'm going to bring it so that these, these brightest spots of the shot are up near 100%. Uh, percent. There is a 100 for Luma. So I'm going to drag this up. And you'll notice it's expanding our graph there up to the top. So right when just kind of the tips of those points are hitting 100, uh, that makes this background here pure white instead of a, a darker white. And I'll do the same thing with the shadows, the darker areas. I'm going to bring these down so that the bottom areas kind of hit the um, hit zero there. This might be a little bit too much. Just these are very fine adjustments. With the highlights, I brought them up 70%. That's what these numbers are. You can also adjust them using the numbers here. And with the shadows, they were pretty dark already, so we only needed to go down a couple, couple percent here. Uh, one side note, these shots are cropped, so they do have pure black at the top and the bottom. That's what 
this white line that's going across the bottom of our uh, scope here, that's what that represents. Um, that looks pretty good. And then if I wanted to, I could go in here to the uh, mid-tones and drag those up or down to make those brighter or darker. And you can see the brightest areas on the scope and the darkest areas are staying roughly in the same spot, and it's moving all the tones in the middle. So if we wanted to brighten up this shot, we could certainly do that using the color board here. If I can see before and after, before, after, very, very major change as far as this exposure room is concerned. So that might not be the look you actually want. And for this short, we're trying to make it a little bit more of a darker, scarier scene. As this is a, a, a scary movie. It's not you know, a ha happy movie. So we might not want to do this type of a change, but that's a way that you can go and start to balance and adjust the color uh, between your clips there. So that's the exposure room. If I go over to saturation, it's very similar. We have our three tiles here, which is going to change highlights, midtones, and shadows for saturation. So if I wanted to make all of the colors, which there's not a lot of colors in this shot, but if I wanted to adjust all the colors here to be uh, a little bit more saturated, maybe bring a little bit more blues into to all that, I could drag my saturation up. Notice if I drag it up, we see a little bit more color. Same thing, I could take the color out of the darker areas, which is most of this shot, and make those adjustments. So the reason you'd want to do a saturation change is because you're trying to draw attention or take attention away from specific colors in your shot. And in this shot, I don't really need to change it. It was balanced pretty well, so the saturation is fine. And then the color room here uh, is also for making changes to the color, but this is going to change kind of the tint of your video. If this wasn't balanced correctly, this is a way for you to add certain colors to certain areas. So and we have the highlights, the mid-tones, and the shadows, and then a master control over here. The master control would add a certain color to everything. So for example, if I wanted to make this shot greener, I could drag the master up to green. If I'm dragging it up, I'm saying add more of that color to the shot. And obviously if I drag it way up to the top, it's a major change. If I wanted to add more blue to the scene, I could drag the master control here over to blue, and it's adding in that color. Most of the color changes I see done on shots are very subtle. You're only going to move up a percentage of two. And we might want to make this all this shot a little bit more darker blue to give that night feel. And even just 4% compared to 0% adds a lot of that blue to that shot. And I could do the same thing just in the darker areas of the shot or just the lighter areas of the shot. I could add more red, and it's adding it to specific spots. At the top right of any of these rooms, you do have a reset button, so we can just reset the color. In addition to that, if we drag any of these down, as we know, add, dragging them up adds that color. If I drag it down, it's going to take away that color. So if I looked at this shot and I said it's too blue, I want to remove some of that blue, I could drag this master control down in the blue areas, and it's going to remove that blue, which then adds in the opposite color, uh, making it either a little bit more red or yellow, whatever tint it goes into. You can see dragging it all the way down under blue adds the opposite color, and that's the same for any of these. So that's kind of an overview of the color board and the way that that color board works. Uh, to get very similar controls, but in a different layout, you can change this over, and you'll see we have different corrections for color board. We could add another one if we wanted to. You can do multiple color corrections. We have color wheels, color curves, and then the hue and saturation curves. So let's take a look at the color wheels. So with color wheels, there's more information here in our um, inspector. So under the view menu, you have an option to toggle the inspector height. You can also use the shortcut here, Control Command 4. And what that does is look at the timeline. When you toggle the inspector height, it makes the inspector go all the way down on your screen. Instead of just have a halfway point, it goes all the way down, which especially for the color wheels, that can be very helpful because uh, even on a larger screen, you're not going to see the entire color wheel and all the information that comes up under each of these uh, color options here 
uh, without expanding the inspector. So the way that the color wheels work, you're making the same adjustments that we saw on the color board. The difference is with the color board, you don't have to switch between rooms. Everything is listed right here. So I see the master control. I see highlights, midtones, and shadows. So if I'm working on the highlights, for example, this slider on the right side is the exposure. So this will take the brightness, make the highlights brighter or darker. I can see that adjustment here. I see the color adjustment on the left side. So I could add more saturation or less saturation. And then I can change the actual tint uh, by dragging the middle of one of these around. And again, this is all for the highlights. So it's just changing kind of the brighter areas of that color uh, to tint it. All of these, you'll see the little reset button in the corner. You can hit reset on any of them to go back to the beginning. And as we're making all of these uh, adjustments here, you may want to go and do this uh, manually instead of with this visual change. So don't hesitate. You can go down and hit show next to any of these and enter in numbers, which is the same thing as making the adjustment up here. It just allows you to type in a very specific number. So that's how you can use the color wheels to go and make adjustments. Just changing the exposure. You have your saturation and then changing the actual tint or adding or subtracting color from a shot. You have all those options there. So that's the color wheels. Next to the color wheels and really any of these options, you do have a mask button very similar to what we saw with effects. So you can apply a mask either to a specific color or a specific shape. And then that color correction will only happen inside of the mask, which can be very helpful. So as an example, let's say I've done that and I like that view, even though I don't really like that. I might go up here and add an additional color wheels correction. And in this case, I want to adjust and affect just Simon's face, the character on the left side here. So I can add a shape mask. I'm going to position it around just his face here. As the primary, we'll take the uh, feather here down just a little bit. And now I can go in here and change. Maybe I want to change the exposure for this area, bring up some of the, the brightness. I could do that. I could change the color if I want. And then it's just affecting Simon's face there on the left. Uh, with masks, you might have noticed at the bottom of the inspector, you can also say I want to affect the outside of the mask versus the inside of the mask, which will change where that correction is happening. If you do that, when you hit outside, you want to go make the changes to your curves, and now you're changing the outside of that mask. As we do this, if we switch back to the video inspector, you'll notice each one of these color corrections is being added, similar to an effect on here. And you can change the order of these, which will adjust how each of these effects are applied. Or you can click on one of these effects and hit the delete key to remove that correction. And then lastly, in addition to the color board and the color wheels, we have color curves, which are also similar to the hue and saturation curves. And these, again, it's all you're doing the same types of changes. The difference here is how the data is being uh, presented to you. So curves are kind of cool because you can click on these curves to add various corrections, and then you just drag up or down the change, and it affects just that area of the image. However, it can be kind of tricky to know what you're adjusting. So the luminance is our brightness and darkness, and then we can affect each channel of color down here. What Final Cut includes on the right side here is this eyedropper, which actually lets you select a specific color. So if I'm trying to affect the blue shirt back here, I can click on the shirt. And what you'll notice is in the luminance, which is the eyedropper I selected, I actually put a point right there. And I can just click and drag this point up or down. And I know that area is affecting that spot on the shirt. Obviously, the curve is, a, is making a change across the entire thing. So I could add another point here and drag this down if I didn't want to affect all of those other colors. And now I can control just that area. In a similar way, if I wanted to change the brightness of this bright area behind Simon's back and shoulder, I could click on that area. It puts a point on the curve. And then maybe I want to drag that curve down which is going to take away some of that brightness behind his shoulder. So now we look before and after. 
really flattened out this picture by brightening this area up. So maybe I want to bring that down a little bit. Before, after. Notice how, how much less bright that background is there. So that's the way you can use the color curves. And then just to show you the hue and saturation curves, very similar you have uh, essentially for each hue and each saturation, which goes down here for each color that you're working with. Uh, you can even go down and change it from orange to another color. But this gives you a curve so that you can affect that color and how that's showing up. There's not much green in this shot. But if we go up to our uh, hue uh, versus hue here, we can change this and it'll change our tint and how we're adjusting the picture. So that's an overview of the color tools that are built into Final Cut Pro. I strongly recommend that if this is an area that you're interested in to take a full-on color correction course, and you can learn a lot about how to manipulate the way your audience reacts to things based on the color that you've applied.